local story. This one is out of Broken Arrow. Apparently, the Broken Arrow police see Rick Hubbard as having the ability to maintain a dual existence. Uh, he's uh, not being detained and not charged at the same time he's been detained, and he's potentially charged. It, it, after arrest, Second Amendment auditor talks awaiting charges, and he maintains his innocence. So Rick Hubbard saw a Broken Arrow police car approaching in, uh, what is that? Neenweiss. Neenweiss, thank you. On April 8th, he knew it would be different. Turns out he got arrested. And now he sits, uh, he's out of jail now, right? And yeah. he was on yes. the air with Pat Campbell yes. discussing it. Uh, it's at Park and, at 51st and Lone Light. And yeah. so yes. apparently they detained him while he wasn't being detained. And then they've set off paperwork that he's being charged. But he's not been informed that he's been charged. Well, yeah, he's not the way actually I been charged. charged. Well, part of that uh, is, no, he has, but the charges have changed. For Broken Arrow charge him one thing. And then the prosecutor's uh, DA, Tim, uh, or Steve Gunsweiler's office, changed it, but they keep delaying the trial. They keep saying, we need more time, we well, need more time. According to Rick, he's not been officially charged mm, yet. Today he did. See, so apparently oh, they yeah. need more time because they're trying to get into his phone. How yes. his attorney, Jay Ramey, are in the midst of a legal battle with both the Tulsa County District Attorney's Office and Broken Arrow Police about a key piece of evidence from the arrest, Hubbard's phone. It contains video Hubbard recorded of his interaction with officers who responded and shot pepper balls at him during his arrest because yep. we all know he needed pepper balls shot during yeah. the arrest. And they they've claimed they've claimed that he that he resisted arrest that he uh, did not did not well, peacefully and, and all of that. Well, NBA PD's own press release they acknowledged that he was complying with orders. And he was pepper bowled while he was complying because he wasn't doing it as quickly as they'd like. Now, he's a, he's a portly fellow that is disabled. There's multiple serious spine surgeries. So he was doing the best he could, but, um, you know, that's, that's not uh, something that's afforded to people whenever the police do not like them. Right. right. Yeah. That, and that's a problem you have with cops is they're trained and again we go back to who's training these cops you know to sniff out the obstinate the one who's not going to submit to the will of the officers and if you aren't submitting fast enough they don't want to hear about your disability. And Rick said well, something great on the interview this morning. Really, a lot of the, these, the obstruction, obstructing the, an officer, these charges and charges like it are um, feel crimes. You hurt that person's feelings. Yeah. Right, and is that constitutional or not? Can you be can you be charged? Well, take a ride for that. Not only not only is it not constitutional, it's a it's a violation of your rights because you have the Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. In other words, obstruct from their point of view because that's the whole point. They came over to find out what he was doing rather than going and talking to the complainant who made the phone call. They go up to the guy with the gun and demand him to answer their questions yeah. and then the give whistle, up the gun and everything else. The whistleblower in this case also doesn't exist. Disappear. Unnamed yeah. sources. Yes. It was the fire department themselves that was the ones complaining. Is that what yes. it's come out? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this, yeah. The, the, who, on the radio, they said the report from Rick Hubbard was that the... Fireman said that a lady was driving in her car, pulled up, saw the guy with the gun, and then the answer was, well, maybe he pointed at me. You got the constant right to face your accuser. Where's the accuser? There was leading questions from the 911 operator to where they said they were able to make the call happen. Okay, so he didn't well, have the gun in his hand or anything at any time. There's no proof at all. There's no proof any of this happened. Yet, here is what happened. All of his guns and ammunition mm -hmm. have been taken from him. Yes. And before he was charged with a crime, apparently he just got charged today. This happened in April. Well, and... Yes. Almost April, 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 seven months without being charged with a crime. Well, he took all of his property. April, How can they do... Is that due process? April, uh, April. Is that due process? Can they take your property, a judge, by order... Take all of your property statutorily. Take away if, your rights. If you Defenders. remain locked up in jail, not on bond, they have 12 months to begin court proceedings. Okay. Right. And, and if you're out, if, if you bond out, yeah. 
you give them an extra six months, and others they have 18 months that they can delay. Right, and what are they doing? They're probably just twisting the knife. They well, don't well, like this no, guy. They, they don't like don't. his rights. They're going to keep his property as long as they can, make this as costly and painful for him as possible, because the law isn't on their side. It's their fields. Well, and they do have this ability that has been afforded to them, or they've seized illegally, to persecute the man. Mm-hmm. And there's a law, I think a guy called in on the radio this morning on Pat Show and said, there's a there's a law in Texas called officer oppression, something like it. Yeah. We need to Google that. Please Google officer oppression Texas or officer oppression law, something like that, Texas. And you can actually bring charges against a police officer or or law enforcement official that has persecuted you wrongly yeah. and outside of the law. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of ridiculous. How can you they, and look, this is familiar, guys. This is what's happening to the president. They're saying yeah. And this is what happened to General Flynn. Well, you didn't do anything wrong, General, the, as we've conducted this investigation to you. However, um, you know, in the process of this kangaroo uh, investigation, um, you have uh, said two things that are, are slightly different. And because of that, you committed a process crime. You are guilty of standing in the way of us finding you guilty for something you didn't do. Yeah, because, so you, because you pled yeah. not guilty. That's obstructing. Well, and, and that's <laughs> that gets to the, the whole point of of this issue. That, that's what I brought up earlier about the obstruction. If you exercise your Fifth Amendment rights, then... Um, Having a Dean Davis, right? Yeah. Does he yeah. have to give his blood or a sample? Even though he offered his blood, it wasn't okay. good enough. Now we're in a rapture. Now, now let's not, let's <laughs> no, not go no, down there. It's self-incrimination, though, is the point. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. We brought up uh, several things, folks. It's the Sixth Amendment where you're entitled to a speedy trial. Mm-hmm. The thing is, speedy is uh, is a subjective <laughs> yes, it term, is. and that's the problem. But in most cases, you have the you have to you have to participate in the extending of the time Mm -hmm. um, yourself. And Mm -hmm. there's usually paperwork that you have to sign that that Mm -hmm. you sign away your Sixth Amendment right to a speedy trial. The the other thing, though, here, and that is more uh, worrisome, is this general idea, because the entire argument about them needing the police and the DA needing... To get into the phone, and Steve, I hope you're listening to this, mm-hmm. because because this goes right to you in your office. Yeah, some buck stops you. With him right you now. do not have the right to a general warrant. Yes, it must be specific. We know that there are that there is um, a specific video on there that that will help. I I believe it'll help the the accused in this particular case. That is. That is worthwhile. If there is something else that is being looked for, then it needs to be specified and everything else it, is It's out. a Russia probe all over okay. again. And we look at these big problems and think, well, they came up from, from the top. But no, sometimes they come from the bottom. Right. And this same Russia probe fishing trip right. uh, mentality is being taken here. Why do you need to look at all of this man's picture, yeah. all of his second, all? Why? You couldn't use it in court anyway, well, legally. The question, is, the question is, what are they fishing for? They have to announce it. And yeah, if so, Tim, you're, you're then right. they have to... They have He's to, offered up the video. Well, the Why thing is, is that they may be looking for the fact that he, that he announced beforehand that he was going to go out there and raise some cane, and therefore it would support their theories. The thing is, they have to say that's what they're going for, and that's all they can look for. This is the one time he wasn't doing but, that. Well, also. Well, <laughs> and that, that still doesn't make sense, Oldham, because it's still not a crime for him to upset folks. Okay, let me, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. the idea is that he would be dis, uh, um, dis- the bill? Um, <laughs> <laughs> carrying his weapon and displaying it. Take a number. Raise your hands. I want to be trying to say something for five minutes here. The warrant has to list the things on it. The judge doesn't give blanket warrants to see if he's got any dirty pictures on sure. his phone or anything. Well, like the problem is right now they want access exactly. to the phone generally. Exactly. It's not that they okay. want access to the uh, video or they so want access right. to specific Say your thing because I'm going to be all speak with Right. So, so th- that's the point. He's he, And what I'm talking to a talk radio host this afternoon, we're like thinking, you know, they probably have video from the different surveillance videos around the park there, and it's going to show excessive use of force because while this disabled guy, or you know, 
he has physical disabilities, is trying to get down to the ground and comply, they're hitting him with pepper balls all over, making it even harder for him to comply. And I think there probably is going to be, and so does this person I was talking to, uh, Pat Campbell, <laughs> that there's a good chance you're going to see some kind of a civil suit coming out of oh, this. Yeah. And I think they want to find out, now what extra video does this guy have that might get well, used against us? This, this is opening a whole other can of worms because it's supposedly a battle over gun rights and permitless carry. But uh, Ramey, Jay Ramey, Hubbard's attorney, yes. says we're at an impasse right now about getting the video out of the phone. The police are telling me they have to download the entire phone because of some sort of protocols. I'm just saying we're not agreeing to that. If you're going to download the entire phone, including all the emails he's written to his wife about whatever, they don't need that. Yeah. We have no problem with the DA or the police wanting the video. We just don't want them to have the entire contents of the phone, which was what Dan Broso was saying. Then listen, I think regardless of what the actual law is, how this falls out, remember the old saying about the police were supposed to serve and what? Protect. protect. And what were they going to protect? Civil rights. Us. Now listen to this and look at the focus of the police and what they're trying to protect. Uh, this is uh, Coke, or Cock, however he says it. We take a mirror image. It's a Broken Arrow police officer, James Coke. Coke, yeah. Okay, we take a mirror image of the device, Coke says. The reason we do that is because we don't want anything to be lost, misplaced, or overlooked. That is to maintain the integrity of the investigation. We're not worried about the, the witness here or the person that we've detained. We copied the device so we have a mirror image to work off so that we don't damage the evidence. Because now we're protecting the investigation and the evidence. Mm. And also they say that uh, the phone, they want the uh, investigators want the phone contents not only because of policy. Because you know how important policy is, boys. But also to protect the investigation. Yeah, that makes sense. Just like whenever they have a physical warrant or physical search your house, they take everything out of your house, including the home, and they reconstruct it back in their evidence room so they don't misplace anything. Mm -hmm. To protect, you know, the, no, the entire why investigation. Don't, if, they're trying to, okay. if they're trying to protect the investigation and the evidence like they're trying to protect Hubbard, why don't they pepper ball the investigation? Okay, here's, <laughs> here's, here's, here's the point. You notice Officer Koch never once referred to statutory law or constitutional law. I have not read the entire not his job. He's a article, cop. He's but a cop, not I'm attorney. telling you, in that response, he said, because it's our protocol. You know what protocol is? That's us making up the law for ourselves right. that right. we're going to be policy. governed by. Our policy, policy. yes. Well, does his policy yeah. violate the law? Yes. Yeah. the question. And does listen, it? protecting an investigation, he means protecting our butts. This is an article you can look it up, but because I didn't read the whole article and I won't, by Stetson Payne, Tulsa World, May 20th, 2019, after arrest, Second Amendment auditor. Yeah. So uh, you can look it up and see what they said. But again, they, they pretty well make up their policy and protocol on the And fly. here's an important detail as well. So in this area, uh, I know this area very well. Actually, it's extremely close to where I live. Uh, there is a community center where Recovered was. A massive, large community center with multiple outdoor indoor cameras. And not even a hundred yards away is this fire station, yeah. which mm -hmm. would you think would have cameras. I don't know that it does or not, but I know the station. Well, and get, there is a steep end of the park, though. Away from hold on, hold <laughs> okay. on. This whole compound has multiple, multiple, multiple buildings with multiple cameras at every angle. There is a football field at the other end. With multiple cameras. There is a skate oh. park there with cameras. There is a high end residential area, which, by the way, those folks have cameras overlooking the park if you're interested. There must be a great number of cameras you know that what? were off. Or malfunctioning for there to be no footage of this. And then yeah. and then BAPD alleges they don't have any body cameras of any of the officers, the seven or however many responded or more. Yeah, and, and, and no dash cam video. Tons. He said it was eight. There are no there are no so how is there no footage? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing. When when they, you know, conveniently lose or damage video footage that is in the property of the local government. And yet they want to have access to all of yours. And here's the thing with Hubbard. He says, I don't even know if I remember my password anymore. The 
It's been so many months. Of right. So many pepper balls, you know. <laughs> hey, speedy trial works both ways, guys. It's not just yeah. rubber. I mean, yeah. curry balls, you might be able to remember those numbers. But yeah. pepper balls. And, you know, I'm probably not going to be training broken arrow law enforcement anytime soon with what I have to say tonight. But I did say on the on the radio show this morning, I, I got a chance to talk to Rick. Uh, Pat was very generous with the time on that. And... Uh, is that, you know, Broken Arrow generally has done a better job than a lot of the departments I've seen. This is beneath their standards. Here's my problem. I, you know, I go down and train at the Tulsa County Jail on mental health to, mm -hmm. to their detention officers and law enforcement. And I've been out to the Broken Arrow Academy training them. Um, the mental health pods that are just... I mean, there's like 500 men alone at the Tulsa jail being treated for mental illness. That's when a mental illness that they're saying, yes, I have problems, I need help. This doesn't count the ones who are in denial of being any mental health issues. Well, who are you talking about? And, you know, and Michelle Robinette, the former, former oh. sheriff, the former interim sheriff at Tulsa County, she said, most of these who are being treated for mental illness here are arrested on obstructing an officer. Right. It's become the catch-all. That's what I said on the radio this morning is, we're going to need our legislature to rein in on this because it's becoming... Now, look, if you're physically, actively trying to obstruct an officer no from getting their job done, that's one thing. But because... You are a little bit slow because of your multiple back surgeries. Because you refuse well, to say, yes, I've done wrong and I'm guilty of a crime. When you've done nothing wrong, you're guilty of no crime. That is not obstruction. And currently, the way the law is written, you can be, will be charged with obstruction. And, and you might beat the rap, but you'll never yeah. beat the ride. You'll never get okay. your money back that you've wasted on bond. You've lost at work. You'll never get your name back. Well, to stay with what David was talking about, these, the, the police around the nation have cried wolf so many times with this obstruct justice, obstructing of justice, obstruction of justice. Well, even our it's FBI. Like, it's like, quit resisting, stop resisting, stop resisting, you know, uh, drop it, hands up, um, yeah. that kind of a but, thing, to, to give themselves the excuse to yes. go up and do what they do, that now it's really hard to believe. Uh, yeah, Bob, I, that there's actually I'm a telling you, issue. and I'm going to go back to the mental health scenario here because I've seen people that they're having a meltdown in the middle of the street. They're scaring the neighboring kids. I've seen cops actually get in their face trying to trigger some kind of behavior oh, yeah. from them where they have the excuse to get them off the streets. Yes. Okay, now listen, I know these cops, they don't want to take you to jail if they know you've got a mental health thing and you'd be better off there. And the problem is we don't have the beds. And so as Ben Fu told me a, a couple of years ago, he says, I think some cops want to believe that jail can become the treatment center that you really need. And that's just not the case. You know, and this is part of our problem of abusing the law. And what, what I'm saying is it's going to take our legislature stepping in to rein in on this well, because it isn't just happening with the local suburban police department this was the half of the Mueller report was about obstructing justice yes. and why because they said we're not guilty that's considered obstruction yes. of justice yeah. it starts at the highest level and it's come right down to the local we gotta level. put an end to it and it's yeah. an embarrassment to all the, the majority of officers that do a wonderful job every day because the people that don't want to believe that cops are necessary or generally good are going to use these legitimate instances uh, of, of oath breaking of, of law breaking of just immoral activity to say oh all cops are bad yeah Yep. It's the same thing they do with guns and gun owners. The minute one gun owner does something or somebody who gets a hold of a gun does something bad, then all those, it's group associations, forced group associations.